I'm sure you're all familiar with the game of Minecraft. And if you aren't, it is an adventuring block game where you get to play as Steve or Alex and venture into the never-ending world with mobs like cows, sheep, chickens, or encountering creatures speaking things you don't quite understand. Minecraft was my childhood. Getting into elementary school, I was the most timid kid you could imagine because my anxiety level shot up so bad. Going to school, even now, still isn't fun. And back then, all I wanted to do was to get home, get in front of the computer desk, and play Minecraft all day. I wasn't good around people, and I certainly didn't make a lot of friends. And while my parents were okay with it for some reason, I was, my friends just thought that I was a weirdo. And through those times of being alone, I was comfortable with myself, but I was being mostly insensible. In Minecraft, I was free to do whatever I wanted to do, but I knew my end goal was to beat the Ender Dragon. It is, it is a formidable creature that lives in the end dimension, and it hits like a truck, I'm telling you. It's not back could end me right then and there, and after creating multiple wards and trying multiple times, guess the result of my fight. Of course, I lost horribly because I was under geared and that I brought an iron sword to the fight, but still couldn't fight the Ender Dragon. Please forget my 8 years old self. After I learned from my mistakes, I, didn't, I decided to invite a friend to tap along. She was, uh, but we weren't starting in a new world. We were starting where I had left off and obviously I had a huge head start. The only thing we ever did together was when we were going mining together and she was generous enough to give me some of her materials so I could craft my iron sword to a diamond sword. But she herself wasn't strong enough to beat the ender dragon. Being the little impatient kid that I was with no sensibility at all, I decided to fight the ender dragon alone and this time <laughs> I won. But I've lost a friend that day. After my friends had found out that I beat the ender dragon alone, she questioned me and left the world in an instant. So I thought that she was only being sensitive, that she should have been happy for the both of us, that I beat the ender dragon and won. And looking back now, I would have been quite angry at myself too. The story I just told you happened a decade ago, when I was only 8 years old. But that path of memories still resonates with me despite me and my friend being apart from, it, from each other now. Minecraft wasn't a game that required any social emotional skills, yet it taught me more than just how to craft a furnace. It taught me be, to be understanding and to put myself in other people's perspective to truly grasp how they felt. But fast forwarding to the present moment, as a high schooler, I find practicing sensibility something much harder than say solving a math problem. If a, complex math, if a complex math function had a way to go around with it, what about human's emotions? Are we truly capable of understanding how everyone around us feel, or is the phrase, I understand how you feel, or idle talk? In my case, if I knew beating the Ender Dragon meant that I was going to lose my friend, or to put it from a more mature perspective, if I knew my choices have consequences, then I wouldn't have done it. And I suppose that this is where video games can become a medium that reflects our daily interactions in the most accurate way possible. For example, games like Detroit Become Human or Life is Strange are some of the best, game, best storytelling games out there. You have been warned from the very beginning of the game that your choices have consequences and your actions have consequences. And it is embedded into your head. Because of the rep repetitive nature of these warnings, it is constantly reminded on the top left of the screen, by the way. Every time that you make a decision, or every time you decided to help someone or not help someone, to stand, out, to stand up and speak, or to just sit down quietly, it has its own actions, no matter whether it is a major or a minor choices. Even if it's a very small action, like watering a plant, Yet, you are thirsty. I'm the worst baby mama. Drink up. These games depend on your sensibility to become the good or the bad person. 
to fix or completely destroy a relationship, to become more friendly or to distance yourself completely from everyone. And all you have is time, buttons, and dialogues. If you can't understand how that works, let me show you. So let me just introduce you to this scene in the game Life is Strange Before the Storm. Uh, before letting you experience the decision-making scenario yourself. Here we have Chloe, who is the main protagonist, and that will be acting upon our decisions. The guy in red, the red varsity jacket, is Drew North, and the guy in blue is Nathan Prescott. To summarize about their situation, Nathan bought his way into the basketball team, and Nathan's dad also fired Drew's dad off his work. So now Drew has to rely on financial aid in order to attend to continue attending Blackwell Academy. So Drew is pick, picking up on Nathan so because of his hardships. Drew also na snatched Nathan's photography project, which is that blue journal you're seeing right there. This is Samantha Myers, who is a friend of Nathan, but depending on your choices, you could increase the relationship between these two people. Now, here's, here's come the fun part. You get to decide to defend Nathan by, by joining in a back-talking challenge against, uh, against Drew, or to sit completely still and do nothing. So would you have out this not so nice of a of a friend of yours or would you skip that action because he has absolutely nothing to do with your life to escalate with the game faster I'm going to give you 5 seconds to make your decisions Let's look at both scenarios here all right If you chose to defend Nathan and successfully win the back talking challenge again through I'm speeding up this for time purpose. Nathan will scold at you, but Samantha will thank you for being so kind because you stood up for his friend and stood up for the snobby kid at school. But if you choose not to defend Nathan, this happens. Nathan's photography project gets thrown into the water fountain, and Samantha later on would tell you to be ashamed of yourself because you didn't help Nathan. Now I understand that the consequences of your actions here might sound a lot less serious compared to how I was putting it in the beginning. And I was hoping that I had more time to explain to you the later interactions you would have with these two characters. But unfortunately, we are quite on a time limit today. But to summarize, this is one of the two important decisions that will allow for a happy ending between Samantha and Nathan. Basically, they fall in love later in the game. Life is Strange is just one of the many storytelling games out there that I guarantee you is a product of genius. It is all about acting around people and think and you have to really put effort into thinking what type of person you want to become based on your decisions. These games, uh, the core aspect of these games are these daily life interactions and to make it more to make it seem more realistic and to make us feel like we need to be more thoughtful and to be more sensible in our own actions. And it's about time we uh, turn the table. It's about time we reframe our interactions in real lives, like these video games characters. Picture this. Before walking into class, you see your table mate who would daily greet you with a fist bump, being wary and tired. So would you wake him up just so he could give you a fist bump? Or would you sit down quietly and wait for him? By giving in more time to think and reframe our interactions at, as these small little games, we can become the more thoughtful and the more friendly person and more approachable person, basically. 
gamifying your interactions, that is, to turn your daily interactions into small little games, can help you understand and can give you a better winner of opportunity to understand all of the potential approaches you can take. Similar to how when you like someone, you would spend time researching on what they like or dislike to buy them the perfect gift. The gamification of your interactions is always applicable in scenarios where you don't have to act right away and you, have, you really have to think about your actions when considering, uh, when considering everything in that scenario. Video games and daily life interactions share the same common ground as common sense and it is all about your sensibility to be the better person. Uh, so I, could, I would say that when you consider your life as a video game, then it must be one terribly difficult one. And unfortunately, unlike video games, you only get to play this once. But by gamifying your interactions, you can make your interactions way more easier and you can socialize with people in the, in the most effective way. And even if you aren't doing so, and even if you don't like the idea of gamification, let me just apply you to use this. Just try not to ruin the game for the other people. Alright? Thank you.